Hello everyone, welcome back to another Inside Infinity Disney Infinity TV trailer breakdown. We know you love them, we love them too, and so we're bringing it uh, to you another one hot and heavy. So gents, we had a breakdown today. Joining me is Jason and Lloyd. How are you guys doing tonight? Very well, thank you. Doing really, really good, Well, You know us, I, I introduced the trailer before you guys because I totally forgot about that part of this whole shindig, but <laughs> you know what? Pre-announced a trailer breakdown. <laughs> I did, I did. It's already been done. Oh, what are we doing here then? <laughs> That's right. This is actually this is like the director commentary after the fact. <laughs> so we're gonna <laughs> do commentary on the commentary. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. I I I'm all about that. That's great. <laughs> I'd like to welcome our friends who are joining us for this impromptu session. We have Florida Gator in the chat, Griffin Draco, Sebastian Miral. Mirrorless, Tesla Blitz, Wildlife. Welcome everyone to the chat. Uh, you can uh, join us on these live events if you'd like to. Just head over to twitch.tv forward slash Disney Infinity TV. You can chat with us. You can give us your thoughts about the trailer. Um, yeah, we'd love to see it. So welcome everyone who's joining us tonight. Gents, before we get started, there was a press release that uh, introduced this, uh, this great news today kind of didn't really catch us by surprise we knew stuff was coming this week but it was still cool to see so we've been uh, reading and hearing about the inside out playset for a little bit uh, now it's time to talk about it so first thing guys uh, first i think we're going to talk about the the uh images that were released with the uh, press release so first up here is what the the inside out playset pack is going to look like so it includes joy and anger and what appears to be uh, i don't know if you call those memory towers or, or what this mm -hmm. this is the official name i haven't seen the movie yet but what do you guys think of the packaging and the uh the playset crystal Lloyd, yeah. your turn. <laughs> okay, so I was—I didn't want to jump over you this time, Jason. No. I did that lot last trailer breakdown. Uh, it looks really good. I—I I was skeptical with the purple, um, the purple packaging that was leaked early. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I like this. Mm -hmm. It looks really, really stylish. It looks, it looks, um, yeah, it looks stylish. It looks new age. It looks also kind of retro at the same time. I—I I really dig it, and I love anger. I really love that figure. I'm not sold on the other figures so much, but Anger, yeah, I want that on my shelf. It, that's a really awesome figure. So you're pretty happy that Anger's... Uh... It looks kind of like a Super Meat Boy character. <laughs> it does. I've always thought... <laughs> yeah, well, I did. It's great, and I want that. So, yeah. No, it yeah. looks, looks really good. What yeah, do you I think, was Jason? saying earlier that it's... Um, I was trying to think of an example of this, but it's... Um, I had one just recently, but... It's hard when you're looking at stuff like this when you haven't seen the movie because you mm -hmm. don't understand the context of the film. You don't understand what the film looks like and you don't know the personalities of these characters, so to speak. And right. so it's quite possible that they will take on completely new light once the film has mm -hmm. been watched um, <laughs> and you can attach those personalities to the figures and I think mm -hmm. they may take on new life because I agree that the design is interesting to say the to say the least mm -hmm. um i don't think it's terrible by any means but yeah it's weird looking at these figures of characters that you literally have zero idea about yeah so i mean i i'm not um i i agree it, it's kind of a, a a new thing i'm not familiar enough with these characters to to tell how different they look than to me they look like what i picture the characters in my head to look like so um once we become a little more familiar i'm sure that might change so here's joy next up we have sadness uh one thing that's kind of interesting about these characters and you'll notice it in all of them they have these little memory balls here and uh so there's a transparent hole in the bottom of the base so these will light up as your base lights up which is really kind of a kind of a neat thing it's yeah. neat all right, here's your uh, anger slash super meat boy character there, uh, Lloyd. <laughs> perfect. Just gonna put it. I'm gonna as soon as I get it, I'm gonna put a band aid on his head, and it will be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> love it. Then we have disgust. Yeah, I don't. She looks disgusted. I mean, again, they've mm -hmm. done well with the uh, like they've the poses are perfect to what they the characters are. So I totally. can't you know, as long as the movie's good, these will become great great figures. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as we look at uh, fear here, uh, Griffin Draco and the or Florida Gator in the chat is saying they're surprised that we didn't get another Star Wars playset uh, before this one. What do you guys think of that? Do you think that it's uh, good that we've we're actually getting our first glimpse at a Disney playset? 
Yeah. I, I think I think they made a mistake last last generation where they was like, OK, this is all the Marvel. This is a Marvel show. We're doing Marvel, Marvel, Marvel. And Disney comes like four months later. Um, I think if they come out of the, the, the gate and they say, yeah, we're Marvel, we're Star Wars and we're Disney, mm -hmm. they're not going to alienate any potential fans or purchasers. It's going to be all out there for whatever you love about Disney. Uh, you'll be able to find something to do in Disney Infinity 3.0, which is great. So do I. Yeah, definitely. So these images I'm bringing up on screen here is uh, looks like they're from the play sets and we're going to see a little bit more of this as we uh, as we actually break down the trailer. Um, but one thing I want to comment uh, on this image and this image is that they it looks like we're in the play set. But this is more than two characters. Uh, in here, so who knows if this is you know marketing magic and and because uh, they've come out and said that you're only going to be able to do two player co op yeah. locally, um, so either it's marketing magic or these are toy box assets. I'm going to go with marketing magic, yeah. um, but um, I think I think what's so great about this and what as so we as we break into the footage, I think this is Disney very clearly saying proving the, 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 the concept of a platform because this playset looks so radically different mm -hmm. to every other playset that currently been shown. I think they are demonstrating what better than they ever have before of why why it makes sense this as 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 a platform. And and, and I agree. Like I, I, I saw someone saying that like the reality is you can go ahead and buy the digital version of Disney Infinity 3.0 and just this playset and mm -hmm. effectively ignore all of Star Wars and it's almost like you're buying Disney Infinity 3.0 mm -hmm. inside out, which is amazing, absolutely amazing, particularly on the back of, and I'm not sure we we'll discussed this, we'll probably discuss it in the next Inside Infinity podcast, but um, Blackburn's comments about the whole, the 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 problem of um, franchised mm -hmm. um, licensed IP in video games and what that, that means and I think... In my eyes, of what I'm seeing so far, they have found a very viable solution outside of mobile. Right. And that's exciting because as a console gamer, I want to make sure that there is a place for licensed movie games mm -hmm. on a console because that's where I enjoy playing my games most of all. So we had a brief discussion uh, prior to starting up this little trailer breakdown. Uh, we know that the Inside Out playset is going to be a 2.5D platformer. Uh, Lloyd, you did a great job before we went live of explaining what that is. Do you mind doing it for those that may not know? Yeah, sure. So you can have a, a 2D platformer, uh, which would be basically you're behind the character, you're beside the character, or you're on top of the character. You're only looking at them from from in two dimensions. Uh, then you have a 3D platformer, which is, if you know, like Super Mario um, 64 and all the Mario games after, except for New Super Mario Brothers, um, you're basically able to move anywhere in the world, and the camera can kind of swing around and do that. Uh, 2.5D was kind of coined prior to... Mario really being what it was uh, on the Nintendo 64 and it's where you basically have kind of the camera locked at an angle behind the character so the character can kind of move around but your but your camera is locked pretty much um, behind that character as you go through the level um, it looks at, like in some of the screenshots there there are going to be some some differing cameras mm -hmm. so they're going to play with some of the camera stuff as well which is great but yeah, it doesn't look like it's a full 3D platformer where you have full control over the camera and all that stuff. Um, but we'll, we'll wait and see, I guess. Yeah. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and start with the trailer. Before we do that, do you guys have anything, uh, any other info you want to mention before we get started? Um, just that this this um, the stuff that they've released for this playset reminds me a lot of Disney Infinity 1.0, where it seems like every playset is going to be very different. Or maybe every um, every IP is going to be very different. So the Star mm -hmm. Wars are going to be probably pretty similar, uh, but it looks like the Marvel and the Disney are setting themselves up to be um, vastly different experiences, which is nice mm -hmm. uh, based on what we got with 2.0, where it was um, basically two play sets with an expansion. Um, it was two that were very similar, and then you had one in space that wasn't like anything else. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but in 1.0, you had the car stuff, you had the pirate stuff, and it, you were just kind of all over the board, and uh, each thing was new and unique. So mm-hmm. this really excites me for the future of playsets in 3.0. Absolutely. I agree. I like that they're taking a chance with this. Um, this is... It's cool. It's cool that they're playing around with different gameplay mechanics, not just giving us rehashing uh, mm-hmm. what we had. I mean, 2.0 was very much a rehash. Uh, two of the two of the three play sets, and you arguably even the third. So, that's a great point, Lloyd. Cool. So here we go. We have the title screen. Uh, we haven't really pointed it out too much. I mean, we have discussed it, but one thing I love about the 3.0 edition, and it's noticeable, not only with what they've announced so far, um, but also uh, in the branding itself, it's no longer Star Wars edition. You know, like last time it was Marvel Super Heroes uh, edition. This is just 3.0. And so I think that's, that's something that's really cool. So we start off, uh, they introduce some of the characters so here we have joy i'm going to turn this volume down a little bit so i don't break everyone's eardrums so here we go so we get to see joy in action here so what do you guys think do you think this is a play set kind of looks like it to me yep yeah so so lloyd this looks like it's i don't know if this is just a cinematic camera angle or what but here we have a uh behind the character view mm-hmm some, yeah, so it looks like um, the camera is going to be switching while you're mm-hmm. playing. So you, you, it doesn't look like you have camera control, but maybe that's just this one section. Maybe yeah, there will be yeah. sections where you do have camera control. I don't know. These are kind of cool uh, platform spikes, <laughs> <laughs> colored pencils. It looks like a cross between a Mario game and um, like um, the old Mickey Mouse games mm-hmm. on like Sega Genesis, where there was a lot of kind of real world, world items used as platforms and, and yeah. that, that can hurt you. Um, yeah, looks looks a lot like that stuff. So the background looks kind of cool. It looks like there's a whimsical music vibe here. Yeah, because we should reiterate the fact that we know that this is not the story of Inside Out. It's a sequel, mm-hmm. uh, or at least a separate story, a brand new story in set in the world of the Inside Out characters and yeah. so on. So, um, which again is a great great thing. Yep. Next up, we have Fear. <laughs> Scared of his old name. <laughs> so here we get another uh I, I believe it's hard to tell in these in both of these shots if this is gameplay or not um i mean it seems like it i think this is that's definitely gameplay yeah it looks looks like gameplay it actually reminds me of um tearaway did you ever play tearaway it's got a very similar feel to what tearaway was like um which is a good thing <laughs> Or like a, an old Spyro game or an old Crash Bandicoot where there's a lot of um, really bright colors and rounded edges. Mm-hmm. It looks very similar to that. Looks like a cool area. It looks kind of like a, I don't know, whimsical child's play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Play area. Again, still keeping to that toy theme as well. And mm-hmm. I don't know how well, whether toys are a big part of the Inside Out story or whatnot, or whether that's just the the pro end result of Dizzy Infinity, mm-hmm. but um, still, I'm, I'm cool with it. Yeah, so it looks so we got some buttons here. We have some puzzle pieces. This looks like it might be like a board game piece, and then we have the bull, which is a wind-up toy. That's a good catch, Jason. The balloons are going to be a pretty big part of it. We've seen balloons in both, uh, both yeah, of In general, now. this trailer shows, I believe, and we'll know by the end of it, but it shows very little in the way of actual enemies. It looks like it's very much puzzle-based uh, collect-a-thon, mm-hmm. which, again, is not a bad thing. That's actually exciting more than anything. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a great uh, gesture by uh, Disgust. So here we got some platforming. It's cool. with uh, That looks like one of those, uh, like, child's, yeah, totally have a lose as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the characters look cool. They look like them themselves. I don't know, it's just it's it's hard with this one, uh, because we just don't know much about the, the movie yet. No. So here's here's Anchor. <laughs> He's so awesome. And we do know that um <clears throat> not Jack Black, um what's his name? Who's Anger? Come on, chat no room. Help me out. No I can't idea. think of their name or his name. 
really famous comedian who's always angry. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me IMDb it because I'm not sure who does the voice acting for it. Uh, Louis Black. Louis Black. Yep. Yeah, that's him. Bill Hader, Amy Poehler, Mindy Kaling. Yeah, a lot of really big names, which is cool. Hopefully, more of them are lending their voices. Mm-hmm. See, we got no, more crayons and uh, woodblock pieces. This is cool. So it looks like he's coming from a specific area, which is this is kind of like that looks more like that side scroller. And then here we get another camera angle. So it's cool. You see that dynamic change. And it's ground pound with his hot head. These clouds look amazing. I love the look of these clouds. Mm -hmm. They look fun, huh? So we've seen uh, three pretty distinct skies. Hopefully we get some of those as sky domes in the uh, toy box. Here it's the big question. I was telling Lloyd before the thing, like everything in this place that looks like it could be part of the toy box. Mm -hmm. And it's that question of how much of this stuff are we going to get in the toy box? Right. It's very strange. Like, I mean, when you look back at Pirates, the Pirates playset, everything in that didn't necessarily look like it could be in the toy box. Mm -hmm. Whereas all of this stuff looks like just toy box pieces much mm -hmm. more. A little bit better blended together than what you would right. get in a, a you know a vanilla toy box, but it's exciting to think that we might get some more platforming elements like those clouds and so on. So, Jason, you wanted enemies. Here are your enemies. Uh, it looks like uh, one of Sadness's attacks is throwing memory balls, whatever they call those. <laughs> so this is cool. Very iconic of scenes we've seen of the movie. Mm -hmm. So who knows if that's going to be a playable area or not, but it would kind of be neat if that was like a hub. Yeah, and it then, it's a hub for mm -hmm. sure. To go hmm. to different. So play inside Riley's head. So I guess that, that's, that's probably what it is then. There's, that's probably a hub and you're going to different areas of Riley's head with different figures and doing different platforming feats to try to collect all this, the balloons, I guess. I don't know what other collectibles are in the game. And but it yeah, makes it's tear away as well, Jason, with the uh, the paper things just kind of unfolding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here, here we get some platform jumping. <laughs> so some people in the chat are saying that this uh, is kind of reminiscent of uh, Mario Galaxy a little bit. Um, doesn't quite seem 3D enough for me as far as movement, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah it could be I mean, if there if it is in fact a hub world that's kind of mario galaxy like where you're kind of going to different planets and doing different things and having different experiences while you're there this kind of oh, looks like sorry go ahead i said i like this this looks yeah. really fun well it looks like we're seeing one perspective of maybe a 3d perspective because this looks kind of like a, a a bowl from like a skate park or something with balloons that you collect kind of like the skate parks in the game and mm -hmm. so i wonder if you can like roll around in three uh, three dimensions for this. I'm really loving how colorful it is. Yeah. Like, I don't want to use the term that it looks like it's really built for a, a younger audience, but like, it just looks amazingly colorful. Like, I think my daughter would love, love, love this. Which, that's a great point, Jason. That makes, that can make this playset uh, a little more universal than uh, some some of the others. Well, that's what I mean. I think when you when you, like you look at this and you go, "What what are you talking about?" Star Wars is in this game, like that. That's perfect. I think that's that it, that sums everything. The very reason they didn't put Star Wars in the three title because it doesn't have to be. It's the gateway to Disney franchises. Mm -hmm. So I think that's yeah. I think I think it's such a cool cool concept. And then, like I say, you do not have to buy this playset if you just want to play. Star Wars, you don't mm -hmm. think this is going to suit you, then you don't have to play it. Everyone loves clowns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, does this look like a boss to you guys? Yeah, that's a nightmare boss character for sure. <laughs> Both literal and in game. <laughs> so here looks like uh, some puzzle puzzle stuff. Cool, yeah, the cool switch. switch. Yeah. yeah. Hope that makes its way into the toy box, huh? Yeah. So over 25 levels. So do you, so you think that this is a, so that the chat is saying Boondog Man's a chat is saying, Lloyd, that was a hub. So 
assuming you can get to these 25 levels from that hub and I assume you unlock them over time, but you do have a little bit of freedom of choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to do anything which would be kind of dirty, which would be have five levels for every figure that you have. Mm. So you have to uh, you have to own all five figures to get all five levels per figure. I hope not, but um, when, when you have multiples of five and there's five figures, it kind of worries me a little tiny bit. Yeah. So here's a scene where uh, it looks like we have two different characters. We have Disgust and Joy in there. Uh, so it looks like this co-op. And it also would be kind of cool. It looks like this may be a puzzle mechanic where one is flipped up on their head. Yeah. Or upside down, I mean. And that sky, the, yeah, the background mm -hmm. changed. Did it, or just the clouds came out? It looks cool. Yeah, it changes with the, the change of perspective there. Yeah, it looks like it changed from summer to winter or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. I think that's exactly what happened, Lloyd. Good mm. catch. Playing cards in the background. This is really creative. Like, I think this is really, really interesting looking. Mm hmm. Lloyd, here's your super meat boy action with these saws yeah. here. <laughs> exactly. That is so good. And again, the diversity of environments is awesome. It, it's, it doesn't seem like the, the environments you're going to be playing in is going to get stale because they, they just look so unique and different. Mm -hmm. It has these moments of Little Big Planet, doesn't it? Very much Little Big Planet. Like Which is perfect. I mean, if, yeah. if if you get a little big planet in, in Disney Infinity, that's gonna that's gonna answer or scratch an itch for a lot of people that have wanted mm -hmm. to play the big planet on a platform that wasn't a PlayStation. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. I was actually thinking that I was thinking like when you think PlayStation and Xbox, they're probably loving the fact because I can't think of any other bigger sort of games like this that aren't like an indie title that are mm. so kid friendly. Mm-hmm. Or targeted to yours towards a young audience. Yep. But, you know, normally games like this are reserved for Nintendo. Yeah, it reminds me of a lot of the uh, kind of shovelware games that you get mm. after a movie comes out on, and they they hit every single platform, so they're really really low res and and stuff. Um, and, and they have some of the, the pl simple platforming stuff. So it looks like some of that's in here, but this looks polished. Like mm -hmm. those are, are polished. It it looks really good. I'm I'm excited for this. So what do you think this pizza means? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I have, have no to idea. have something in the movie. There has to be something about a pizza. Because yeah. that looks delicious. It does. <laughs> <laughs> High dev pizza. Evil broccoli. Evil broccoli. Enemy. Yeah. That's, that's funny. So, so uh, do you guys think that each character is going to have their own set of skills? And uh, kind of going back to what you're saying, Lloyd, do you think that they will each character will provide their own diversity in these levels not necessarily like lock lock things out um i i saw a list where it gave the the one key mechanic that every figure has mm. uh, so it'll be it'll be similar to like super mario brothers 2 where uh, peach can float and luigi can jump yeah. high okay and toads fast uh, there's similar things like that where anger can um he can basically go in lava and, and withstand any fire um one of them can jump super high the other one has better shots uh, i i couldn't find the list again i saw it earlier today and i meant to bookmark it um, but i couldn't um or i forgot to and i couldn't find it again um but yeah it looks like that's exactly what it's going to be so um well i I doubt they're going to lock out levels um, for the figures. Um, at least I, I so hope that that's not a thing. It looks like there's going to be sections of individual levels where you're going to need anger because there's going to be a collectible in a pool of fire. So you're going to have to switch to anger and go get it. Um, but then you might need to get um, sadness to do whatever her special power is to get some some bauble somewhere um, yeah. to lock all the stuff in, in the uh, playset. This is so cool to me. I love watching the ripple of the lightning in this cloud section here those clouds have got to be in the toy box they have to be they have to be they look like a block and you can just see that they have the property of being able to set it to lightning or mm. whether it disappears when you or maybe it's by default when you jump on it it'll disappear but that's cool it is cool look forward to the super mario brothers 3 clones <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> and, uh, <whatnot. laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I wonder how if there's going to be any that are going to be taken down. Um, <laughs> well, like, remember, remember for one, they did a homage to uh, what one one level one one or whatever. Yeah, 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 with uh, oh. Wreck It Ralph. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here you go. Um, I saw on on Infinity Inquirer they have Joy. Um, she can Joy can glide across gaps the others can't overcome. Okay. Fear is a frightful bundle of nerves, and he's the fastest runner. He can cross bridges and platforms before they collapse. Oh, wow. Anger's hot-headed powerhouse can cross beds of lava with ease. Disgust is always disgusted. She repels off the clouds, letting her jump higher than anyone. And sadness is a, a worrisome friend turns waves of sadness into melancholy fun. She can travel on clouds without them fading beneath her. Oh, so, that's cool. So that's neat. They each have their own little little abilities that's going to help yeah. out. That's, that's really cool. Great idea. Yeah. Very good. Like if you know you have a uh, cloud level coming up, then pop down sadness and make your yeah. life a little easier. So this is cool. This is kind of a... Very Mario. Yeah. Totally. So I think uh, I think that's about it. Yeah, and then it just shows the starter pack and then uh, the playset. I think we do get uh, a little post credit scene like... That is it. So what do you guys that think? I think it's great. As I said, I think it's. I, I love the fact that it's com something completely different. Mm -hmm. To use a Monty Python reference, um, <laughs> I think it just it just makes a uh, all the sense in the world. And that, as I said, like you, no Star Wars fan can get upset that what's this Disney stuff doing in my Star Wars game because it's, it's like it wasn't your game to start off with, mm -hmm. and it is completely optional content. The question is. Well, the, now the discussion is to open is it depending on how long it is it is it worth the price that that's being you know paid for it effectively yeah. because I mean, if you think about it it's more than just the, the potentially $35 play set that you know the reality is if you're a parent you're probably going to end up having your arm twisted to buy all the figures so what is it five figures five yep yeah. so you got three additional figures to buy so that's getting up that's basically a full retail game yeah it's a little bit more it's like eighty dollars to, to buy all that um yeah it's a lot of money um one thing i gotta say about this is i had i didn't have zero interest because that's that's not accurate i'm gonna collect all the figures because that's what i do um but i wasn't really super stoked about playing this playset because i know little about the movie i haven't seen the movie um it's not really on my kids radar for some reason they they don't seem super interested in it i'm gonna take them to it anyway but they're they're not super hyped for it but right after i saw this um trailer it's like okay this will be one that i will play i will enjoy my kids will play and they will enjoy because they love mario games they love platformers um yeah, this this excites me. Twenty five levels. That's more than I thought there would be. Um, I, I wonder what twenty five levels translates to. Is that two hours again? Like so. So Rob from CoinOp TV and the chat is saying that uh, he he heard that it was about nine hours of wow. gameplay, which is quite a bit of gameplay. That's that's amazing, Rob. Thanks for for that little bit. That's great. And it's also worth noting that this film is getting ridiculously good reviews. Like from the people that have seen it, they're saying it's some of Pixar's best work. And I can tell by the sheer amount of like um, um, merch that's coming out of Disney for this film. I think they know that that's going to be a real winner. I know mm -hmm. that um, Pixar Post put some reviews of some of the books that are like 14 different, you know, children's books that are coming out um, on the property. So it's clearly going to be a good film and i think that will translate into if, it, if it's a great film that kids like they're definitely going to want to play play the game and, and i guess yes if you want to get them all but obviously you don't have to have all the figures to play the play set in its bare bare minimum so it's only the collector but mm -hmm. i think and also for the toy box side of things like i'm excited about it because i for those that don't know i started at an educational uh, project on Toy Box Imagineer where I wanted to create educational toy boxes and I think these figures would be phenomenal for some um, educational toy box content created by mm -hmm. community members based on the themes of their names like fear and, and all that sort of stuff. I think that could make some really compelling educational content that I hope makes it to the toy box sometime. It's an easy challenge for them to do for the top five. Let's make toy boxes based on fear or toy boxes make on joy or whatever. I think it's cool. I'm, I'm very excited about it. 
I, I just noticed this. I have no idea what this means, but each one of these bases is is very different, and that's interesting. And although we've seen that before, I wonder if these kind of connect to make some sort of shape. The one thing I notice about um, fear is that little piece of hair coming off the back mm -hmm. is the bane of every parent existence <laughs> when these figures come out. <laughs> yeah. It'll be, it'll be like Violet's head that kept popping yep. off. <laughs> totally. Looks very fragile and like it could get snagged on things. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, anything else you guys want to say before I we we end the uh, trailer breakdown? No, I don't think so. I think it's just, again, it's just really nice to have a, a something fresh. And like we said, that it feels like 1.0 again, where you're going to have three very different experiences with the play sets, which ultimately translates into there's going to be something for everybody to enjoy with this, uh, with this game. Regardless of what type of game you're into, there'll be something that you can really enjoy playing to. And it's great that we've got the option to buy what we want if you only want that you can do that you don't have to buy get the star wars starter set by default and then mm -hmm. spend an additional 35 just to get the inside out if your kids just love inside out there's an option for you just to get that version of the game totally yeah that's great yeah a uh, florida gator in the chat room says something really interesting uh i'm very interested to see how fear interacts with the monsters characters or jack skellington <sighs> <laughs> that's that if they will program stuff like and that would be that would be amazing that would be awesome <laughs> and still no word yet whether the original voice actors are voicing these uh figures either i don't believe anger for sure anger has been announced um lewis okay. black but we haven't heard about the others you would think though you would think so there's yeah. no other inside out games coming out so you'd imagine that would be the case but mm -hmm. just thought i'd uh point that out and um yeah, it's good. And again, it's just another solve that issue that they don't have to worry about seeing the film early if it's a completely original story yeah, totally. to tell. So, yeah, it's cool. Don't really have to worry about spoilers too much, yeah. I would imagine. Hopefully we'll do a spoiler cast for the film when we all do see it eventually. Yes. Yeah, we heard that you got uh, you got offered to go early and you were just, you're just too good for that, Jason. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Cool. Well, gents, uh, I think that's going to wrap up this trailer breakdown. It's nice to have another trailer breakdown. Uh, people in chat are, are asking if we're going to be breaking down other videos, and uh, th that is a, a on a case by case basis, depending on the uh, original or the origination of those videos, and then just other things. So we we definitely do want to uh, break down as much video content as we can, uh, but we, at the same time. Uh, in certain situations we you know you want to make sure everything's on the up and up so um yeah but you can definitely count on any official trailer being broken down uh because that's kind of what we do and it'll be fun my favorite thing is when we get those toy box sneaks and you know you can kind of like read between the lines there and see uh see what kind of new toy box so items excited for that trailer yeah when are they gonna release the toy box trailer for crying out loud <laughs> isn't that the question so the bet is are we gonna hear about a another playset, an unannounced playset, before we we hear about the uh the toy box what do you guys think i think we've got to hear about a playset at e3 i don't know i just yeah. feel like maybe we get i think there's going to be something huge at e3 but then also we've got d23 later in the year mm -hmm which is going to be a big event as well, we anticipate. Totally. So I think, who knows? We'll wait and see. Cool. Yeah, I wonder if um, if they're going to announce at E3 that they're still working with Sony and they're going to have some special variant figure on a Sony platform. I hope that doesn't happen. I I, I, I don't like that type of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I wonder if that will then give them one of the big three presentations to kind of unveil something new um, and use it that way. That would be That would be interesting as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want a Star Wars collector's base, Lloyd? Um, you know, I, I really wanted the, the Marvel one, but I just couldn't justify the size and the cost. But if it's like a Millennium Falcon or an ATAT, -AT, uh, I would have to buy it. Um, if I could, <laughs> um, You'd be forced. I would yeah. be forced, uh, pun intended, <laughs> yeah. fully to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. 
yeah, I think I would be more interested. I mean, I was the exact same thing as you, Lloyd, the exact same thing, but I would uh, think I'd be a lot more interested in a Star Wars collector's edition. Yeah, yeah we'll see. So, cool, gents. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Um, thank you both for taking the time to uh, do this. I know people in the chat appreciate uh appreciate it as well i think uh, i think it was a good good time and exciting time to head for this playset and to see what other uh new gameplay we might be getting in the near future definitely all right guys well thanks everyone who joined us in the chat and uh make sure you check out uh, our next inside infinity later this week but until then uh we hope you are having a great week and it's filled with infinite possibilities <laughs>